In this video, I want to discuss listening and the role it plays in the communication process. So let's start with why listening is important and the importance of effective listening. Uh, first of all, listening is the most frequent form of communication. As you can see in this, this graph, this representation of one idea about how much we listen represents between mass listening, meaning you know, TV, radio, uh, just listening to, to mass communication, and then also face-to-face -face listening. Uh, over 50% of our time communicating is spent listening. So it's one of the most necessary skills in the business and professional world. We need to be able to listen effectively. We're going to spend a lot of time listening to our bosses give us instructions or listening to customers give us uh, their needs and their views of things, listening to superiors and subordinates uh, give us all kinds of information. So we spend more time listening than we do any other type of communication. So it's a really critical skill, not only in the business world, but, uh, but in our personal lives as well. So when we talk about listening, what we're really saying is, is we're talking about the active process of making meaning out of another person's spoken message. Uh, and that's what we mean by listening. And there's, there's a lot that goes into listening, but I want to differentiate, first of all, listening from hearing. Hearing is a part of the listening process, but it's not uh, the whole deal. So there's more to listening than just hearing. So, for example, uh, in hearing, we know that hearing is constant. We hear whether we want to or not. It's constant. As long as we have adequate hearing skills, uh, we don't have hearing deficiency or whatever, then hearing is constant. We constantly have sound waves that are that are striking our eardrums and vibrating at certain frequencies and so forth and sending signals to our brain. And, uh, and the physiological process of how that works is pretty amazing. And it's constant. Listening, however, is intermittent. We don't listen all the time. So while hearing happens all the time, whether we want it to or not, listening has more of a switch that we can turn kind of on and off. He hearing is a natural ability. You kind of either have it or you don't. You either have effective hearing or you have a hearing deficiency in some way. But listening is a learned skill. It's something that we can improve. It, it is a skill. Uh, it's not just a natural abil ability. It's a skill that can be improved over time by learning how to do it more effectively and by practicing better listening habits that we're going to talk about. So listening is a learned skill. Uh, hearing is passive, whereas listening is an active process. Um, so listening has an active component, something, again, it's, it's, it's intermittent. It's something we have to choose to do and has an active component to it. Listening involves only reception. So when we're, or sorry, when we're talking about hearing, we're talking about only receiving messages uh, and receiving those sounds and things. Uh, but listening has to do with actually using that message and understanding it and then even going further than that and responding to that message. So <clears throat> while hearing is, is listening, or sorry, hearing is only reception, listening is actually using that message, understanding it, responding to it, and there's more to it than just receiving the sounds that are coming in. So we've differentiated a little bit between hearing and listening, so let's talk a little bit about what is actually involved in the in the listening process then. Well, first of all, I mean, even though we just differentiated between these two, hearing is a critical part of the listening process. So hearing and listening are not the same thing, but hearing is a critical part of the listening process. If you can't hear effectively, either because you have some sort of listening deficiency or because you're, you know, you're in some place that's too loud to hear things or you're too distracted to be able to, to really hear effectively, um, then, then that's a problem. So hearing effectively is the first step in the listening process. It's a critical part of the listening process, but that's not where it ends. We move on to uh, the characteristic of understanding. We have to next be able to understand uh, the listening, uh, what we're hearing. Right? The listening process involves understanding. So we have to be able to make sense of it both by um, speaking the same language, for example, or being able to speak the same language. A common language would be part of understanding. If you don't speak the language that the other person is using, then you're not going to be able to understand what they're saying. Uh, and sometimes even if you're both speaking the same language, you're both speaking English. I'm not a highly technical person or a highly mathematical person, so when people use lots of mathematical uh, terminology or, or you know, really highly technological, uh, you know, I have friends who are engineers and mathematicians and things, and they use all kinds of words that I don't really understand, even though I know they're speaking English, but they're not speaking my language and they're not using words that I can understand. Um, so the next step is is understanding. And then remembering. We have to be able to either, at the very least in the short term, remember what that person is saying, potentially what they're saying. We may want to remember in the long term as well or somewhere in between. But at least in the short term for the duration of that conversation, we ought to be able to remember what that person is saying. So we have first we have to be able to hear it, then we understand it, then we remember it, 
And then we're going to interpret it. What is the person trying them to say by this? Not only interpret the, the verbal parts of their message, interpret the words that they're using and understanding those, but, but interpreting and understanding kind of between the lines. What, what is their nonverbal communication saying to us? What's their tone saying to us? How is their gesture affecting, affecting how we interpret this, ma this uh, message that they're sending? So we have to be able to interpret that as part of the listening process. We're also again, uh, then going to evaluate what it is they're saying and, and sort of be a little critical of what they're saying and try and uh, understand it at a deeper level through evaluation. And then finally responding. We'll talk about responding, different kinds of responses here in a moment, but uh, we need to be able to respond then as well. Sometimes that's non-verbally through just the nod of a head. Sometimes it's verbally, you know, a little bit or a lot of responses, but uh, we have all kinds of responses that we can use that are all part of the listening process. This creates what we call the hurrier model of the listening process. And it's just one model of how listening happens in that listening process, but it's what we call the hurrier, the first letter of each of those, you know, H-U-R-I-E-R, -E kind of maybe a helpful tool in remembering the different steps of that process. But the hurrier model, hearing, understanding, remembering, uh, interpreting, evaluating, and responding. So now we have the components of the listening process. So, but we use listening in different ways. So let's talk about some different types of listening that we have. Um, first, we have critical listening, where we're trying to really evaluate and be critical of what that person is saying. We're, we're analyzing uh, what they're saying and and uh, and you know, kind of listening not just as skeptics, but uh, and 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 but it could be skeptical listening, but also critical listening, trying to analyze, evaluate those types of things. Let's have what we call task-oriented listening, which is listening in order to be able to uh, accomplish or repeat a task. So when, when you're getting instructions from someone about how to do someone to do something, that would be task-oriented listening. Right? And then finally, we have empathic listening, which is listening um, to with the with the purpose of of developing and growing and maintaining a relationship. So you're listening to be able to relate to that person and uh, understand them at kind of an emotional level. And, and so we have empathic listening. Um, which, and so we have three different types of listening that require three different types of skills. So, um, so we need to be aware that there are different types of listening. We need to choose the appropriate one for different circumstances. So why is it so hard to listen? And it is hard to listen at times, right? There, there are a lot of challenges associated with listening. So why is that? What are some of those challenges? Well, first of all, listening is not easy. It's just not. There's, it's not a natural ability for us. Um, we, we combat things like information overload, where we have just so many stimuli coming in, especially in the modern world today. We have so many stimuli that, that it makes it uh, difficult to really focus in and, and choose to listen in that situation. Uh, we also have personal concerns that can get in the way, right? Listening is not easy because sometimes we have our own thing going on, and so listening to somebody else is not really a high priority. We're, we're kind of in our own head about what's going on there. Uh, we also have rapid thought. So, uh, you know, there are different... Uh, calculations as to how fast people speak and how fast people think and things but on average some we would say a lot of studies would say that that we speak at a rate of about 150 words per minute and that we think at a rate of about 450 words per minute so our mind moves a lot faster than other people's mouths do so we tend to get ahead of things and we'll talk about some of the challenges that can create but we tend to get ahead of things and, and our mind can move fast enough that it makes it difficult for us to stick with that person and really listen and then we have to calculate the, the effect of noise as well, making it a difficult task to listen. Listening is not easy because of the different uh, noise, not just um, not just um, physi or, you know, uh, physical noise from the outside world, um, you know, things like loud noises, and, and, but we have the temperature, we have things like, are you, how are you feeling, are you fatigued? Um, you know, again, what do you have going on in your life? Those, those types of noise that can impact uh, listening and make it a more difficult task. Listening is also a challenge because not all listeners or all listeners don't receive the same message, right? We all hear the same words and, and hear the same person speaking them or whatever and come to different interpretations sometimes. So um, that can make it a challenge to listen. Or that interpretation factor in particular can make it a challenge to listen and, uh, because we end up on different pages even when we hear the same things. We also have some poor listening habits that can make it a challenge to listen. And, and some of these include pseudo listening, which is just... You know, you're going through the motions of listening, nodding your head, making the right noises and things, but not really truly listening. You're not understanding. You're not remembering. You're not doing all those things involved in that hurrier model. So you're just pseudo listening, or you're stage hogging, where where you uh, really try and direct the conversation around to yourself at all times, no matter what the other person is saying. You you do what you can to direct the conversation to yourself. There's selective listening, where we're only listening to 
uh, and for what we want to hear or what we would like to hear out of that situation. Sometimes we fill in the gaps again. Our mind gets ahead of the, the other person speaking. It moves a lot faster. So we fill in the gaps by um, by just assuming what that person is going to say and, and jumping to conclusions, and that's an issue. Um, sometimes we engage in insulated listening where we don't hear things that we that we think will hurt us or that uh, that don't really jive with our self-concept or whatever. We might insulate ourselves from that through insulated listening and not really listen effectively then. Um, defensive listening where we're specifically listening for things that might hurt, might give us cause for offense and things. Uh, and then ambushing, basically listening in order to come up with ways like a defense attorney right or a prosecuting attorney either way listening to the opposition's uh, witness trying to think of things that that person is saying listening so that they can come back at things that that person is saying and question them and and challenge those things and uh, just ambush listening listening for things we can use against that person essentially so <laughs> what are some different <coughs> excuse me appropriate responses for listening um, well uh, one that we overlook a lot of times is just being silent we, sometimes silence is the best response. Sometimes we don't need to say anything. Maybe we acknowledge with a head nod or whatever, but we don't always have to, to speak in, in verbal responses. Uh, when we do want to be verbalize our responses, sometimes it can be helpful to ask questions of the other person. Sometimes we can paraphrase that, that, that what that person is saying, and that's not the same as parody. It's not the same as just repeating what they're saying. We rearrange that um, so that we put it in our own words, and then we, we send it back to them to ensure that we have proper understanding in paraphrasing. Sometimes it's it's appropriate to empathize, depending on what that person is saying. Sometimes they just need somebody to empathize with them and to uh, to comfort them and to... Uh, to bring them that kind of response. Um, other times supporting and, and affirming what that person is, is going through, affirming what they're saying is important. Sometimes we can analyze and really start to, to dig into and, and become more critical of, of uh, what that person is saying and, and uh, analyze it that way. We can evaluate. We can give an evaluation of what that person is telling us. Uh, now we're starting to use a little more judgmental type uh, language and, and uh, in evaluating those things. And, and other times we can advise. We can say to this person, here's what I see is going on. Here's what I would encourage you to do as a result. Um, so we can we can offer advising. Now, all of these could potentially be appropriate responses. So we need to be sure that that uh, as listeners that we're, we're doing our best to um, select the most appropriate response in that situation based on, um, based on us. Who am I? Am I a person who gives advice or am I mostly a person who empathizes and things based on who the other person is what do i think they're looking for based on what our relationship is uh, what does this person come to me for and what what is our relationship like or how close are we and what kind of relationship do we have so we'll, all of these things will advise and, and inform what kind of listening response would be appropriate in that particular situation but then we do our best to, to choose the right one and and, uh, and adapt from there uh, well, we're, I don't want to speak too much in generalizations, but but we do find that there are some differences in the way men and women communicate. And I want to clarify, first of all, that, that we find that men and women aren't necessarily wired differently. It's not so much that we're, we're created, you know, we have these differences fundamentally at a physiological level that make us listen differently. But, but over the, the thousands of years of socialization, more than anything, men and women have been instructed and taught how to listen differently and, and how to engage with others. So, uh, so I want to point that out and point out that we're talking here in generalizations. Not all men uh, listen this way and not all women listen this way. But, but having said all that, in general, we find these things to be true, generally speaking, of men and women in terms of listening. So first of all, men tend to be more critical or, or task-oriented, have that kind of uh, analytic or task-oriented listening style. They listen more for what they can do to fix things and as you can see, their goal is to, to perform tasks and then and to report information and things. Whereas women tend to be more relationally oriented in their listening style and, and practice more uh, empathetic listening, empathic listening and empathetic listening. Because uh, their goal is to enhance the relationship and to build rapport, to continue to, to grow that relationship and do what they can in that uh, context. So, so we tend to have different uh, listening styles in that regard, men and women do. Men also tend to focus on one task at a time, tend to be more more focused on one thing at a time, whereas we find women have more of an ability to multitask, although I want to caution you too that multitasking can be really a case of divided attention, but, but in so much as such a thing is possible and, and can be done effectively, women tend to be able to multitask more effectively and listen to multiple messages more effectively than men can. Um, men also, or, um, men tend to have masculinely gendered perceptions and expectations, women tend to have femininely gendered uh, 
perceptions and expectations. Again, we're talking in generalizations here, but but that stands to reason men tend to follow more masculine uh, gender expectations in terms of listening. Again, we're getting on to socialization here. How have we been socialized? So, anyway, please let me know what questions you have about any of this or any other content. I'd be happy to email.